Okay. And we're rolling. So everyone, everyone say, uh, say hi to Shingo and uh, 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 Michelle. <laughs> so uh, I'll pick this up as we go. And like I said, I'm going to try to not be obtrusive or intrusive with, you know, pointing the camera at you. And then we'll try to remember to pick up the microphones, you know, uh, so, so that'll work out. We'll see how it goes. Um, anyway, the first thing, uh, like I said, I need to bring you back and uh, refocus you on these kind of things. Uh, what we're going to have to do as part of our discussion is really call out the, the, the empathy part. Like, who is this for? And of course, when all of you created the, your ideas, you probably think, it's like, well, it's, duh, it's obvious. It's not necessarily obvious. What, uh, what, you, what you have in your mind in terms of the, uh, the segment uh, the, or the population that you think would be interested in this idea is not, not necessarily what other people think. So you got to be very verbose about it because when you're talking about it, other people might say, it's like, oh, uh, or at least think to themselves, they might think, oh, actually I was thinking, you know, someone else. And if we discuss about it, actually, uh, that could actually help hone our ideas. So again, don't make too many assumptions uh, just about, you know, who it's for and why people would like it. We got to say it out the front of our faces and maybe it, you'll get some surprises. Also part of that discussion of, you know, the, the uh, developing the understanding is uh, still going down a little deeper in terms of who it's for and also talking about the technological um, assumptions that you made about, uh, about this group of people. Because obviously it's digital media, so there's some computerized aspect and you're assuming people have access to some kind of technology. Uh, and so, again, those are some of the things we need to talk about, is what are your basic assumptions on who this is for and how, the, and also how they would use it. Then we also have to kind of sneak into our discussions is the question, uh, it's a great idea, is it digital media? Uh, a lot of this stuff, I mean, when we talk about digital media, um, I mean, we, throughout the program, and also through the past couple years where P, uh, uh, the seniors have been putting together their capstone projects, uh, a lot of times people just kind of really kind of skirt the edge, and the only thing that's really digital about it is, uh, it's a website, and we have a website to build a, you know, uh, build a community or something like that. It's like, is that digital media? And, and people would argue, it's like, well, yeah, because it's, you know, it's using a computer. And uh, so technically, it's digital media. Well, the only thing is, is that if you go that far in the periphery of what, you know, we're actually trying to do here in this program, uh, you got to remember that will impact what kind of grade you get on the other side of this capstone uh, project. Uh, Professor Jarvis, I uh, actually, I don't know if you heard this before, or maybe you'll hear it again later from him. He gave me a good metaphor, or uh, uh, an analogy to describe to you guys when making decisions of what kind of capstone project you want to undertake. He said, uh, he used the, uh, uh, he described uh, um, high divers in like the Olympics, you know, uh, jumping off, you know, high boards from, I don't know what, I, I know nothing about that sport, by the way, so I, maybe, some of the subtlety is lost on me, but uh, they, the divers can choose what kind of dive they plan to do and how many turns and twists that they do on the way down into the water. And uh, they can pick something really simple and execute it perfectly and get a so-so score because they really didn't you know, achieve much or do, any, uh, do much interesting things. Or you could do something that's really complex and really you know, uh, dazzling with lots of spins and rotations and things like that, and not nail it perfectly and get a higher score simply because it's more challenging. So that's, uh, that's I'm kind of putting that out there uh, for you guys, the, the diver analogy uh, that you can pick and we can, well, we can discuss uh, these ideas, which like I said, are like it, not technically or not really to the heart of what we were trying to accomplish in this program, but it's still okay, you can do it, but that will impact uh, how well uh, you're graded when you act, you know, if you actually go down this path uh, for your capstone project. So <laughs> the more you keep it to this kind of model, the better is all I'm saying. Um, let's see, and then finally, uh, we also have to talk about uh, this, if not necessarily today, at some point, is that, yeah, it's a great idea, yeah, it's digital media, 
can you actually do it with a small team of people in basically, well, it's not even two semesters, it's because uh, um, you guys, when you do your capstone projects, you also have to do a lot of marketing activities and other like, you know, selling kind of, uh, you know, prep for things like, like what happened here last night with the, um, was it the DMS fair and the, and the seniors made their presentations. All that stuff takes a lot of time and pulls you away from actual development work. So uh, even though you will have a year, you know, two semesters to actually build your capstone project, you don't actually have a full year to work on it. It's probably just a couple of months. And so is it even feasible you know, to do it? And that's when we're going to have to talk about here, later in the semester, the, kind, the idea of doing a proof of concept, just to see the nugget of like, what is, you know, well, what can actually be done? And can you still visualize you doing it uh, in, your, in your senior year? Yeah, or is it just going to be too big? So um, with that, let me start off, uh, kind of turn things back to you. Let me pick this thing up and ask you guys, uh, like, what was your favorite? Or actually, uh, what of all of these ideas interests you? And uh, I don't know how, let's see, to do it. Maybe we'll just go around the room, if you will. And there's no commitments here. You're not saying, I vote for, I shouldn't have used the word vote before. It's just uh, kind of put it on the table. What do you want to hear more about? I guess we'll start the uh, Geraldo. Um, <clears throat> um, I'm hit by the idea yeah, that I've Or you can come back. I mean. Oh, okay. Uh, no. So the idea that I found um, interesting um, because I think I I faced this I faced this issue many times is the parking space indicator. I've seen. Uh, who is that? Uh, Amina. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Yep. Uh, I think that it's a simple idea, but um, I've seen other systems at uh, mall where you can okay. uh, easily tell like when there's parking space. Available. Actually. Um, yeah, let, let me just set the stage here. Um, yeah, we'll go into detail uh, and ask, we'll ask her questions. Uh, so hold those, you know, those thoughts. Okay. Uh, don't lose them, but uh, we'll buzz around the room. I don't want to give everyone the bums rush and go too quick, but yeah, just uh, indicate which one, uh, in, just so we can get on the same page, so to speak, and uh, we'll move on. So, Famous? Oh, um, I would like the, uh, the pen translator idea. Uh, let's see, who was that? Where? Uh, uh, oh yeah, pen translator. Okay. I'm Mina. Oh, go ah. <laughs> early start there. Pulling ahead. I also like the pen translator and the VR graphic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. By the way. Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. I should have said one or two. I suppose. <laughs> you want to go back? Is anything else that also interests you? Yeah, or we'll just go with that for now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, no more creepy algorithms. So I'll, I'll put that down. I'm just, I'm just doing tick marks myself. Um, okay, and let's see. So, got that. And, uh, yeah, as we get farther away from this mic, I don't know if you want to pass that over to Lou. And Lou? Uh, my favorite is Heartbeat. Which one? Uh, the Heartbeat. Like, uh, yeah, Heartbeat. heartbeat. Um, oh, Connolly? Or? Yeah, yeah. Connolly. Okay. Yeah. All right, Mojin. Um, I'm most intrigued by the the social atmosphere coloring book. I just I I, I really liked you to explain oh. more of it. Yep, got that, Amos. Uh, I think and uh, the noise adapter. Noise adapter. Because Actually, I, I guess it would help me. Uh, Give me the name first. Yes, uh, I like Shingo's no, uh, noise adapter. Oh, here, yeah, noise adapter. Got it. Yeah. Anything else, or? Well, I just I just think it's really interesting because it's like actually really helpful for a lot of people, but we haven't come up with anything like that yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, I also like the heartbeat. Heartbeat. Yeah. Okay. Heartbeat. Got it. Uh, I'm interested in the sphere coloring book as well. Social, sphere coloring book. Famous? Yeah. Got it. 
Uh, I like the programmable sculpture idea and Michelle's music matcher. I want to hear more uh, about that one. It's backers. Uh, who's the sculpture? Uh. Wait. <laughs> I'm in it. Oh, got it. Good. Yeah. And, and which else? Uh, you said another one? Uh, music matcher. Michelle. Michelle. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. That, and that's, yeah, it just occurs to me now. Uh, music matchers like Michelle. Jinga won't be able to discuss their ideas. I don't know. We'll figure that out. <laughs> uh, I liked uh, Virtual Zen for Children with Disabilities from Talis Polishinsky. I really wish I had. Oh, uh, yours. Um, I'm sorry, so which one is in here? The Virtual Zen the virtual for. Zen. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, I like Michelle's virtual reality dresser. Virtual, the, oh, the VR dresser, got it. Yeah. I like Mojin's uh, closet clean out and Michael's food truck tracker app. It's food. Uh, Michael's what? Oh, the food truck? Yeah. Okay. I like food trucks. Okay. I like. <coughs> yes. <laughs> I like Conley's heartbeat. Um, I really like the catchphrase, find beats to match your beats. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I like Lava's music therapy customization technology. It kind of goes along with mine, so I think uh, that could be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. By the way, um, yeah, I didn't even bring it up, but this is typical for when we start doing this whole, you know, uh, coming up with ideas is there's, in, there's obvious overlap. It's like, oh, you were thinking about that too. And then so... Just keep that in mind. We can kind of merge some of these ideas and bring together, you know, uh, yeah, bring them together and actually uh, compile some of the ideas together. So, so uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if, I suppose I maybe should have suggested that you also do tick marks, but, uh, so lose the pen translator, uh, let's see, Conley's heartbeat, simple, uh, the heartbeat uh, um, idea. Uh, had they had three famous uh, social atmospheric and, uh, coloring book, uh, two, and then we had a smattering of other ones that you heard. Um, so, uh, let's see, basically now it's just a matter of let's drill down on, on any one of those. And does, oh, so uh, I asked you to put together these PowerPoint presentation slides, obviously to, you know, and you guys were expecting here to stand and deliver, you know, and give a little spiel here. Uh, I apologize, I, I kind of did that on purpose because I wanted you prepared to speak about these ideas. So now, actually, only some of you are going to speak about your ideas. So actually, I'm, I guess I'll do this uh, alphabetically. Conley, I guess, you're on, and yeah, thanks. So uh, give us just a, a, that overview, and actually, let's just spend a couple minutes and ask some questions and I'm and I'm gonna ask questions too and uh, trying to kind of bring you guys back to all of this stuff here. Cool. So what the hell did you have in mind here with the heartbeat? So the heartbeat one? Yeah. Um, yeah, so basically I wear a Fitbit. I have heart rate, heart rate data being taken all the time. Um, a lot of people wear like Apple Watches or health apps to take heart rate data all the time. I thought it'd be really cool to like have an application, a mobile application that can play either audio like music or like sounds to like calm you when your like heart rate spikes like if you're studying. Um, but it also has like implications for like exercise, like if you're like having a really intense workout and you need like intense music to match it. So like kind of customize both like regular audio and music. Um, I kind of had it in mind for like more active adults, like people who would be more likely to wear wearable technology. Um, yeah, so I think does that explain it? Okay, so uh, I've got questions, but I'll open it up to any of you guys. And now this is where it gets awkward with the microphone. But uh, actually, yeah, let's start with people near, nearby. <laughs> Ask questions. I'm wondering what happens if your heartbeat changes in the middle of a song. Actually, I did think of that. I thought it would, like, cue. Like, so, you know, you can, like, add things like a cue for Spotify. That wouldn't just be, like, shift. <laughs> you okay. know? Well, actually, those kind of, that, that's a great question. But... Uh, uh, yeah, we don't have to make decisions mm -hmm. about that stuff, but yeah, that's the kind of stuff is like we have to actually kind of noodle that later. Um, actually, uh, I don't know. I think AJ, you have, you know, we can make your make our way back to tell us. I'm still just like, is it 
music that BPM matches your heart rate BPM or is it just like music for like an intense workout, like a workout, like an intense playlist? Because like I'm just someone who listens to like faster music. So like hovering around 110 is like that's not going to feel like really intense. Or like if I'm at 150, I'm like I'm probably dying. So yeah. you should probably got to watch out for that kind of thing. Yeah. You can oh yeah. TBD. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like, I think there'd be, like, ranges for different kinds of music. I know Spotify has an algorithm that um, matches your run tempo with music. So I was thinking, like, kind of along that, it wouldn't always be, like, one for one, because song beats tend to be a little faster than the typical heartbeat. But um, I thought it could have, like, good applications, too, for, like, you can set, like, if you're working out and you want, like, music versus, like, if you're studying and you want, like, if your heart rate starts to spike, like, <laughs> something to, like, calm you down or, like, remind you to breathe or something. Like a, uh, not really like a guided meditation, but like something like that. Before we uh, uh, go to uh, Caroline, um, uh, also, I know you already have questions in mind, but also start thinking of questions about this stuff in terms, not so much about the operability of the idea, but remember, we're trying to pick, get to a point where we can pick ideas. So start asking about like, uh, like I'll, where I'm gonna go is with a question of like, so you're talking a little bit of hardware here. Mm -hmm that monitors your heart and stuff like that. So don't answer that yet. Let's uh, answer some other questions. What if your heartbeat is irregular? Ooh. Great question. <laughs> <laughs> could like, be like, hey, by the way, did you know I had a regular heartbeat? I don't know. <laughs> It'd be also be, yeah, I was like, if you like, maybe it could like detect if you're having a heart attack and be like. Call 911. Yeah, call 911. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering if it's gonna be out of like a playlist that you create or if it's gonna like pull music or if it's gonna be like a Pandora, Spotify where it pulls like music of a artist you give or something. And like the base of the idea, I was kind of thinking of like a Spotify-esque platform. So I wonder if I could actually like integrate it with Spotify and like pull like your types of music, I don't know. Um, TBD, good question. Okay. So anything on this side that we have to throw the microphone over to? Yep. Um, actually, famous talk slide. I, I, hold, the, hold the mic there. Uh, I think this will pick you out there, this one over here. Yeah, I would hope, like, all that one. Actually, so if you just, like, yeah, if you sneeze or, like, if you took the, like, wearable tech off, like, it shouldn't, like, automatically call 911. If you're just like, whoop, got a shower, like, <laughs> yikes. Yeah. <laughs> um, good question. I guess, oh, like, you oh, can, like, check on. only while the app is open or something, it can, like, run. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, again, uh, the operability questions are good so we can get our head around it. But uh, in terms of how we would pull this off, in terms of a capstone project, mm -hmm. uh, so I uh, take it you, you are suggesting that we build some, some hardware, like a wearable. <laughs> Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, I would, I guess the biggest hurdle would be like access to data because a lot of applications already have the data. So you wouldn't need to like build a hardware component necessarily. You just need to somehow like access like the Fitbit app data. Does anyone know, is Fitbit, uh, does it have an open API? I don't so. think it does. And I think that um, Apple, for example, like I was reading through the presentation mm -hmm. very sensible, like health information. Mm -hmm. See that? Yeah, that's the biggest hurdle I think would yeah. be with this app. Actually, uh, I know Apple does have an API for for to for, for to use it because they want people to develop applications for the Apple Watch. Now that would lock you into the Apple Watch, and I would assume, and this is a totally assumption, is that because uh, they're in competition, uh, Fitbit is in competition, mm -hmm. that they would also have an open API that other people could create applications yeah. for. It. So that's something that. We would just have to remember that might be, you know. Yeah, that's roadblock. like when I was thinking of this, I'm like, that's the biggest hurdle. Because I'd want to use something that, like, instead of like building your own heart rate monitor that everybody then has to get, is like use the platforms mm -hmm. that are already out there. Okay. Any other uh, kind of logistical questions? Sir? Yeah. So, with the, the heart rate monitor, um, you know, I say, How do you stop the watch from being up, like, not 
that's a question for the developers at Fitbit. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it does that, <laughs> in yeah. my experience. Okay. Not that I go to many construction sites, but. <laughs> uh, I have another question about licensing of music. Uh, I know that it's a thing, but I don't know too much about it. Uh, that could be, I don't, let me preface, I, I, I don't want to keep on throwing like, uh, uh, things like, you know, you know, this won't work and that won't work. I don't want to be so negative, but these are things that we have to eventually talk about, and mm -hmm. one of them would be licensing. Do you have any idea? Because I, I really don't, but I know it could be an issue. I know Spotify has an open API, and I was thinking I could just like integrate these APIs into an application. Okay. So I know Spotify and SoundCloud have open APIs, and somebody used it in my web program class last semester. Ah, okay, so, that's great. Yeah, so it's just like figuring out the details of that. Okay, dokie. Any other questions? Uh, or else we can kind of toggle over to another idea? Mm. Uh, okay. Um, great. So uh, we'll, we'll keep that in rotation. Uh, let's go to Lou's idea. Um, you also got three interested uh, parties. Actually, if you can pass the talking stick. Thank you. So if you could uh, give us a little... Just a little intro about uh, the pen translator. Yeah, so when I took German, cl German class last semester, and when I uh, tried to translate from German to English, and then uh, it's, it's hard, like, when I have to open my computer and go to Google Translate from German to English. So I think uh, re-adding the, like, the pen translator to like scanning a line of sentences, a whole paragraph, and translate to German to English. Yeah. So, uh, if you could uh, d maybe talk a little more about the operability. I'm trying to get my head around. So, so it yeah. Pen, so you have and a pen. It, there's and something. And it's like a camera. It's right camera here, like on small the pen. Camera on, right on the top of the pen, and what you can scan on the center. Yeah. Okay. So, is it a writing Im implement or just a camera? Like a, a small pen size. Is it a with the camera. pen sized camera, or is it a pen? Uh, I think pen, and then just like just camera, like small camera to like scan or like uh, laser light or something. Okay. Uh -huh. So and let's see, display a three D screen to show the words. So where would the screen be? Uh, screen. That means like you know like when. Uh, the, uh, we call like the 3D screen. So when you scan it, and it will like display on a table or like front of your face, like 3D screen. Or so you say, oh, okay. So I know what it means. Uh -huh. A 3D screen. Yeah, 3D like, screen. Is that an existing product or something or? Uh, no. Or, yeah. Yeah, that's why I would like to. Okay. Hey. Like, um, Questions. Yeah, the virtual reality. Okay. Yeah. Oh, a VR type of thing. So. You would, uh, I, yeah, I'm sorry, AR. So you would be wearing something like some uh, like goggles? Your face. Yeah. But you're wearing goggles, right? You don't have to. You can, like, yeah, you don't have to. Onto a screen. Like, can you just be like a projector? Like on your phone, yeah, yeah. even. Oh, okay, so not necessarily 3D. Yeah. Right. Oh. Ah, okay. I, I. I see now. So. So. Um, I'm. And this is just my understanding. And then I'll shut up. Is that so? Why do you need the camera on the pen if you have this and and it has a camera? Can't you just use that? No, because if you use phone, so it's gonna be in Google Translate. So if so, I want to read like the bench translator. So everything. Mm -hmm. No normal pen, or you also you scan the word like the paragraph. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, questions and this is okay. The connection, I guess. I'll talk about this. Yeah. 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 I seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm 
Yeah. Okay. <coughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that sounds familiar, yeah. Uh, other, other questions or, yeah, thoughts about this? Yeah. Also, by the way, real time too. I mean, yeah. yeah. Um, so, one of the things I think you could do maybe is a prior or two things. One is a, if you had it at a ballpoint pen, yeah. so instead of like taking a visual uh, feedback, it like tracks where the ball moved mm -hmm. and records your memory that way. Um, so, it's a little bit different. And then also, since it's for learners, if you had a thing where, uh, like, you know, I took Japanese, you know, the big problem I had was like, how oh, accurate. Could I hear everyone this room? So if there was a, like, this is 80% accurate, like, in terms of yeah. like, mistakes and everything, I think that would also be. Okay. Yep. Yeah. AJ? Actually, maybe throw that down. So maybe if you had like a proprietary like translation like al like software algorithm that could incentivize people to use more, to like use their phone less because you know everyone's tried to use translate but it's like hit and miss and kind of everything online like that is there now kind of is and like, but you see a lot of like like something I've seen recently is you can there's like when you can talk into and it perfectly translates to the foreign language you're doing but it's just on this one recorder you have to buy so if you could maybe integrate a new better software into the pen idea that would maybe incentivize using the pen and the pen function more. Okay. Other uh, thoughts, ideas, questions? And uh, so I, I hate to be dense and asking, you know, it's like some more, for more clarification, but I will. Uh, you say for social media users. Can you explain? Like, well, the social media aspect? Oh wait, no, I'm looking at I'm looking at famouses. Oh, it's right next. <laughs> I think maybe we should use different fonts. I apologize. Yeah, for learners, God, I was looking over there. It's like, nah, I'm getting confused reading this <laughs> because I was looking at the wrong one. Okay, I apologize. Um, all right, and yeah, uh, so I don't have any other questions or any other thoughts. So let's uh, let's try another one. Um, let's see. Um, I guess uh, famous, uh, you're up. So uh, specifically on the, the one I was just looking at, the Social Atmosphere Coloring Book. And maybe throw the mic down there so we can... Uh, there's the microphone. See what we do for you guys? We still think about it. Awesome. Okay, so... The Social Atmosphere Coloring Book um, is a simple idea. There are a lot of APIs um, out there like uh, Luke and like social tone analyzers that I can connect. So the purpose would be to grab different posts from social media like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I don't know if you can post text on Instagram, but the idea would be to grab text, run it through a social tonal analyzer like Luke, and which gives you like a scale between like negative one and one and divide that up into the different uh, colors we have. Um, red probably being like anger, blue maybe like uh, happiness, and plot those colors on a map of the area that you're in and let that uh, your, your posts color the map of where you are. So it will be like a group community uh, <laughs> kind of like data painting that's built off of everyone in like a five mile radius. So, uh, so like, kind of a mashup. Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know, if reading too much into it, but uh, uh, like a mashup between Google Maps, you could zoom in in an area and see the overlay of the color of like people's moods based on what's being posted in that geographic area. Is mm -hmm. that right? Yep. Oh, okay. Intriguing. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Maybe it start sending the microphone down there. Uh, Thanks. So would this be like Be used for? Absolutely used for all three of you, depending on the ideas. 
user. So if your research is looking at like a new area of the place, you can look at colors and tell like the general mood. Um, if there's an artist, it's pretty colors, which is also fun. But there's no text. So I don't really know how to tell you the social issues going on. You would just see like a lot of people are angry. I would imagine, just to build on that, is like when there's an event, like uh, a, uh, here on campus, and there's uh, speeches going on on the steps of the library, uh, would that, you know, it's like if this was, uh, if there's enough usage, would that light up that area, and you could see the mood of the crowd at that, at that time in that area. So yeah, that would be intriguing. Uh, yeah, anywhere, yeah. 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 Uh, so I'll just say like I was kind of confused before you explained it, but now I think it's actually a really cool idea. Like after having you explained it, um, my only question is is one of like privacy. Uh, the thing I'm imagining, I mean, I'm sure this isn't how you envision it, but like in a map you'll have like Google Maps you have that like thumbtack kind of deal where it's like you're pinpoint your exact location. Um, so obviously, like I don't think my name will be above my thumbtack, but um, is that a potential concern of yours, is privacy? I'm sorry, what did you say? Well, it's always what? Updating. Oh, always updating. Okay, uh, I didn't hear that. AJ? So, you know, so I think what you could do, just an idea, is like have maybe be like a time lapse of like the past, you know, week or whatever. So like they appear and disappear like really quick and like that way. So no one can be concerned about that. But also oh, be yeah, integrated with social media where you can turn off your location. It could just have the dot in like a general area or randomized or something. Um, I'm wondering with like the mood detector, wouldn't it, could, like, wouldn't it be easier to like Based on, you know, Facebook has the how are you feeling and you can like pick an emoji and like wouldn't that be an easier way to like pick color or like ba based on like emojis people use in like the post or whatever you could use that to determine color versus like looking at the words and the tone of a p text post which is honestly kind of difficult even for people to like figure out like from text. So have them self-identify as opposed to having something scanned yeah. to try to analyze. Or hashtags, yeah, that works too. Or, or hashtags, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, okay, that's, that's good. Um, other? Yeah. So I was kind of thinking about the same thing that he was talking about. Um, so if you're trying to pick up mood and tones from text, which I assume is like going to be effective for most of the time, but sometimes, what about sarcasm or like humor that doesn't really go with what the words it said, but like using your interpretation and it's hard to be like clarified exactly what it is. So would it be something that you would potentially be concerned about or want to maybe clarify that throughout some kind of methods when you're doing it? Yeah, um, so the tonal analyzers that are existing, they're not perfect. Um, they can do that once on the not all the time. Um, but neither can humans. So <laughs> it's, it's kind of like, it, it, it is an issue, but we can't solve it ourselves. Let me ask you, you, you mentioned, what was it Luke? Or what? Luke. Uh, does uh, everyone know what Luke is, or is it just me? It's called L-I-W, or L-W-I-C. I don't know why it's not Luke. I, I really don't. Okay. Um, well, that's one of those all out. I'm in a lot of also by the Watson personality types. Right. Um, but there's a lot of things, actually, that's a lot of time. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just have a question. So it's like an app, or is it like an over? Of other social media apps, or oh, yeah. like, can it only pull data from other people who have the app, or does it pull from like all science of like everyone in the area, or like how does that actually work? Like, would I have to like go on this specific app and be like, okay, what's the mood overlay like this area, or would it like always be I'm 
about barriers and inviting them to privacy. Like past a certain threshold, so is this is like a concern if you don't want it to happen, or are you just like asking if my intent to be it? No, I'm, I'm just curious because like I can see, <clears throat> like I can see how it would work as far as like the technology of like collecting the data, but I guess it's more of a question of like how or when or whose data it's collecting. I mean, would it be something that like every person on Instagram gets their data collected, or would it be like only you? Have this app, oh, no, no. like data gets collected, like that kind of thing. With like Twitter and Twitter and Facebook APIs, it collects every time. It, like you can set to a certain time, it'll you know, keep collecting data constantly. So it will be random in a certain area, but it will just be all the mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, any other questions uh, on the social atmosphere coloring book? Love the name, by the way. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, let's uh, jump on another one now. There's uh, like we had. Uh, actually, I guess uh, I'll leave it up to you guys. Now that we've uh, you see where you know and how we're discussing it, um, we can. I don't know. Uh, just who wants to assert themselves and and if you got one, like tell us you had a a you know a, an interest. Okay. Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that would probably be best. So for the virtual Zen for children with disabilities, which is intriguing. <laughs> I'm glad. The hope is to intrigue. Mm -hmm. um, no, so my idea was, so uh, for anyone who knows me will know that I'm very interested in video games. Um, but I wanted to create something that was obviously like more useful to like a population than just a video game. Not that video games aren't great, but something that would have more of an impact. So I was thinking of, I call it a virtual zen, but basically some kind of virtual environment for uh, children with disabilities, or that's what I want to target it to, but it could even work for like preschool or kindergarten age um, children. And so if you think about like a virtual environment where you're kind of like in a classroom and you have exposure to like art therapy and music therapy and like small activities and things, that could just be like a good way for um, children who struggle with disabilities, something like, ADHD or Down syndrome or autism and things like that to just like have a place where they can just interact and explore with a world that's like very accessible and that's kind of meant to help them. So something like um, music therapy where they get like small music lessons and they can follow along by you know pressing the space bar to keep up with the beat or like moving music a little bit to create their own sounds and things like things that would help calm them down and help them interact with their environment in a very like safe space um, in a way that you know teachers my sister my sister works with special education students so that's kind of where this idea stemmed from um, so a place where you know she could have students work on this like while they're in the classroom and it would be kind of a way to like control a larger group of children who need a little bit more attention um, or even like at home um, I mean obviously like art therapy and music therapy are really great options but they're not realistically accessible for everyone so this would just be like an easier way for them to like have access to those things um, without having to take like the time and the money and everything else of like actually going to these lessons and things Yeah, questions right there Brian? So, if like something could like a prototype could be created and then you could actually take it in the classrooms and see how children react to it um, it would also be something 
that would have multiple options. So like I would be thinking of having something that could have like five or six different stations and then different activities within each station. So like the art corner where there's different art activities and a music corner and et cetera. Um, and that would hopefully attract like a wider range of children with um, different needs and um, different abilities. Um, and then also it would be something, if it was some kind of online application or something, it would be something that could be updated. So if you get a lot of feedback, like students people like on the platform yeah 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 so I was thinking of just having it be like some kind of like software or something that you could just download to your um, I was thinking hopefully to have it work for like computers and tablets because those tend to be like the, um, the most accessible. Yeah. yeah, most accessible. And one of the things is that um, students who have special needs tend to be some of the first to get technology at a younger age because it helps them. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it would be something that would be easily accessible to them. Um, and it would, wouldn't be like they would have to go buy. So I wouldn't want them to have to like go buy something that's really expensive just to use it. Like that kind of something that could be looked in like having the teacher version like if you had your whole class like on this site like or software or whatever interacting and then have like the teacher be able to like monitor what people are doing what people are using like that could be an option that could be looked into yeah Dave. Um, this is important for a suggestion um, I think an important feature would also be I think an important be, uh, feature would also be that to have appeal for kids who don't have uh, yeah. special needs um, I think it's a valuable experience, especially at a young age, for uh, kids with special needs and kids with that special needs to be in, a, in the same environment and working together. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I think uh, if there's like a wider appeal um, than just uh, kids with special needs, uh, overall, it would be a much better experience. Yeah, I think that's that's one of the reasons why like I would want to specifically like target towards but I think it could also work for like younger age children like um, like in my sister's classroom she says you know that she'll have a uh, special like lower functioning special needs children who are around you know 10 to 12 and she does a lot of the same activities with them as she'll do with her kindergarten class of um, regularly abled students because she says you know it's kind of a similar level of interaction um, but the reason that I was thinking of more specifically targeting towards disabled children is I feel like there is a lot of um, there's a lot of like apps and software and games out there that's already addressed towards like the general public um, you know like we've probably all played some kind of learning educational video game when we were in elementary school um, that's like already created for us so I thought like it would be nice to have something that was specifically created towards children who like aren't included in like the normal population <laughs> uh, okay, any other questions uh, for that idea? The virtual Zen for children with disabilities. We're good for now. Um, so, uh, let's see. In the interest of time, well actually, uh, I, I, hope, I hope you appreciate that uh, spending this much time talking about every idea just isn't feasible. Actually, I think I tried to do that last year and you know, it, it, just, uh, it just becomes too much. And also, as we go through this, uh, already you're probably thinking, it's like, wow, that's, that's a good idea, or even better than mine, or, or whatever. Or, or you still think that yours is very good. And so, uh, basically the idea here is to do this first cut, where we let other people decide what's good. So basically you guys have, in effect, done that. We've just picked out a small handful, and that's what we've spent time on this time.
the next round that we go through uh, next week, uh, and I'll, I'll flesh this out when we get closer to it, is basically this is where uh, anyone can basically uh, reassert their idea. Like maybe you didn't represent it well enough to catch people's uh, attention, and you really want to try it again and, and push a little harder. So in other words, we're going to kind of turn it around and let anyone kind of self-identify. So he's like, no, I, uh, I really want to uh, put this out in front of you guys. So uh, the details of what I'm saying there, like I said, I'll, I'll flesh that out and keep, uh, keep communicating with you guys over the course of the week, uh, next week uh, via Slack. And uh, um, so, so watch for that. And then the other thing I need to uh, kind of refocus on is a totally different subject, which is this idea of pairing up with the seniors, uh, the seniors that presented here in this room last night. Uh, so the idea was is that you guys see that stuff. Uh, and by the way, yes, I have a recording of uh, last night. And uh, actually, I was hoping to get it online by now. But uh, I'm working with the classroom IT people. And you know they have to pull the video off. They have to process it and then upload it. And then you guys will have access to either see it again, or for some of you, uh, for the first time, what the seniors are working on at this, you know, uh, for their capstone project, and then you guys need to pair up with uh, with one of the groups. And uh, how we do that, the process for that, I don't know because the idea is like, you know, it's like we can't have all of you all shadow one or two groups. We got to kind of smooth it out, where uh, you know, kind of evenly. So I'll figure out how to figure that out, but. The idea here is you need to be, you all need to be familiar with what the seniors are doing right now. And then I guess kind of assert yourselves to say, I want to be paired up with this team. And what you'll do is basically shadow them for a little bit. You will have a couple of assignments, starting with the first one, uh, which I'll, I still have to flesh out, is where you guys have to write a press release for the, uh, for the senior uh, capstone project that they're working on now and uh, that kind of stuff. So that's coming up, bless you. And uh, the whole uh, shadowing and following and actually working with them as they work on their project is something that's coming. And uh, I just have to kind of put the logistics together, which uh, obviously I haven't done yet because we just started, we just kicked off this whole part last night. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Again, I'll communicate, with, uh, I'll communicate the details about that with you guys via Slack. And finally, let me just ask you guys a question about Slack. Uh, so um, we haven't actually used it much in this course. Uh, some of you who are involved with some of my other courses this semester see that I, you know, I'm using it for all, you know, for everything. And it's working out pretty good, especially in my big one, like you know, with CSC 170, it's like a lifesaver. Uh, and also uh, working with TAs you know, in those courses, uh, working with Slack is good. And then also what I learned is um, some of the other teachers, uh, I forgot his name, who's teaching DMS 101, do you remember? What was his name? Eric Loy. Eric Loy, yeah. Yeah, that, I did not know that. He presented, uh, you know, also last night, you know, his little intro to, you know, to people uh, about DMS 101, and he said that he's using Slack, and I'm like, ah, that's, that's great. So, so uh, I guess I just want to ask you guys, or actually, I'm watching. Oh. Oh, who? Kay Phillips. Kay Phillips. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. I. That's. Did you guys like arrange this? I am. So I'll say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's su totally sui sponte, you know. And uh, uh, what? <laughs> Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm just all excited. It's like because I, I was so nervous about this. It's like, am I going to just embarrass? Is this just going to be a hot mess, you know? And because, uh, like I said, friends of mine. I think I told you guys, friends of mine over at RIT are all over it. It's like, but that's another environment, and you know, maybe you of our students just like that's not our flavor. And then also, some of you, a lot of you actually told me about um, the other one, uh, another platform, communication platform that other people are using here at the university and uh, whatever, I forgot the name of it. But uh, and I was like, maybe that's the flavor we should be using. So, so I guess, is, flat, is, is Slack okay? 
Even though I haven't been using it that much for DMS uh, 371, I do plan to get the ball rolling. And again, so because we don't meet more than just you know this time once a week, uh, there will be a lot of things going on, especially more and more as we get into it. Uh, and I'm just going to use Slack to communicate with you guys. So uh, keep keep doing that. Keep checking those you know notifications or leave those notifications on. And, uh, and also, just in terms of usage, always remember, uh, look for the start a thread button. I think I covered that with you guys, that uh, uh, when responding to a message, don't start another message. That's the way they Slack had in mind how to use it, how to have conversations in Slack. And uh, try to use the help channel for questions uh, as opposed to DMing me. Uh, because, as always, chances are if you had a question, probably two or three other of you also had the same question. So uh, use the help channel. Um, other than that, I guess uh, I'll just say thank you for putting out all your ideas and preparing to you know, present for them. Uh, next time, like I said, we're going to go through these again. And I guess I'm going to put this out there. Uh, if one thing I've noticed uh, in you know trying to do this DMS 371 thing is that you know I ask for ideas and then so this is a snapshot in time. Over the next couple weeks, you'll have more ideas, and I don't know like do I restart or something like that. So I think I'm just going to put it out there that you can introduce more ideas uh, or edit these ideas and tweak them as we go. Uh, logistically, I don't know how that will work. I guess I don't know. Talk to me in Slack, and we'll 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 either change these ideas, or you can add new ones, uh, and we can forego some of the ones that you want to abandon in kind of a uh, very flexible, dynamic way. So uh, just keep that in mind too. So keep keep more new ideas coming if you have them. So till the next time, or actually till we meet again in Slack sometime. Uh, thank you very much, and I'll see you guys later.